Bernie Dog here. Maybe you found an old kerosene burning stove like this Primus from 1948 in an attic or maybe in a shop or maybe on eBay and now you want to get it running. Yours is dirty just like mine is and you want to know what to do. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now once you've wiped it off or washed off the exterior so it's not so dirty, these are the steps you'll need to take. You'll need to dump the old fuel and rinse the tank. You'll need to replace the rubber fuel cap gasket. You'll need to replace or service the leather pump cup. And you'll need to service the non-return valve, the little rubber pip that's in there. Okay, let's dump that fuel out. You can see my kerosene is yellow because it's very old and oxidized. Your fuel may look even worse. And you may even have dried kerosene that look like black crusty patches when you look inside with a, with a flashlight. If you have dried kerosene or gooey kerosene inside your stove, put acetone in it, fill it about two-thirds full, and let it soak for several days. You can even add some nuts and bolts or some BBs in there and shake it all around. Pour it out. That'll clean your tank after it's soaked for a good time because acetone is a solvent for dried kerosene. It'll get rid of all the guck inside your tank. Next, we want to replace the fuel cap gasket. Now, if your stove's been around for a while and the gasket's old, it may be hard and brittle. Whether it's hard and brittle or still kind of a little stiff, a dental tool will help you pry it out of the cap. You can get dental tools at the link I'm including down in the description. They're cheap. Um, pry it out carefully without scratching the inner surface of your cap. This one was fairly flexible, so it wasn't too hard. If you find yours is really hard, it might be to your advantage to heat it slightly with a torch to soften it up a little bit before you try to pry it out. Once it's out, Take your new soft and resilient gasket and pop it in place. You may need to work it down with the dental tool to work it down all the way past the thread so it's nice and snug down at the bottom. Install it on the stove and it'll seat the gasket all the way to the bottom once it's pretty well on. Next step is to remove the pump from the stove. Just unscrew the pump cap. If it's stiff, you can add some penetrant. And go ahead and remove the pump from the pump tube. Take a look at your leather pump cup and determine if it's in pretty good shape. If your pump cup is in good shape, you can just go ahead and soak it in some mineral oil. By good shape, I mean is it still flexible? Can it still be used? If it's no good, you'll need to replace it. And I have a video you can see in the upper right hand corner of the screen. You can find a link there to that video that shows you how to replace pump cups in two different ways. Next, it's time to remove the NRV from the pump tube of the stove. To do so, you're going to need an NRV wrench. NRV stands for non-return valve. It's a one-way valve, also called a check valve. Here I'm removing it. This one has been removed before and has a new head gasket on it. So since I've done that work before, it's pretty easy. But if yours is old or does not have a head gasket on it, you may need to go through more elaborate procedures. Let me show you how you can do that in a different way. For stoves that haven't been worked on in quite some time or who do not have NRV head gaskets on them, it's an, I like to use a vise. Now I'm showing you a, a variety of NRV tools here for removal of the NRV and all these will work and they're available usually on eBay or through specialized uh, internet sellers either on eBay or through uh, actual websites. What I like to do is go ahead and clamp my NRV wrench vertically in the vise and then I put the stove onto the end of the wrench. Now that means that I can push down very firmly on the stove. And that's my prime concern here is to make sure that I hold the stove firmly against the wrench. Okay, and there you heard the NRV pop as it cut loose. Now, I freeze-framed the next part here because I'm going to want you to watch this again. Um, here's the way this works. Is first, watch again and notice that I slightly tighten the NRV first before I then 
loosen the N NRV by turning in a counterclockwise direction. And then you'll hear it pop as it cuts loose. All my effort is directed at holding that stove tank firmly against the wrench, much more so than actually turning the stove. By doing that, you'll keep the wrench end from jumping off of the head of the NRV and damaging the NRV. So let's watch that clip again. Okay, tightening slightly, then loosening. And there it goes. And we just unscrew it a little bit more and here's our NRV, non-return valve. So here's the NRV and I'm gonna use these accessory jaws in my vise to hold the NRV to loosen up the head. When these are in your stove for a long time, they can get really difficult to remove. So if you don't have a vise, you don't have accessory jaws, you're probably gonna to have to use a pair of pliers padded well padded well with some leather or a couple of rags wrapped around the barrel of the NRV. The accessory jaws hold the NRV barrel without damage and then I can use my NRV wrench to break that connection here, there we go, to loosen up the head of the NRV. And you can see that's loosened up and ready to be disassembled. Let's take a look at NRVs. In my many years of working with stoves, I've determined there's basically two types of NRVs. However, what often happens is the parts of the NRVs can get swapped and switched out. But I'm going to show you the two types of NRVs that are actually in existence, even though their, their parts may be mixed and matched. Okay, this is one type of NRV. This one has a brass pip cup that holds a little sliver of rubber, or these days people are using Viton. Um, and you can see that there's a shape to that head so that the head of the NRV can fit down into that. Here's our other type of NRV, which came later. This was a later development when they figured out how to make a one-piece pip, which is uh, kind of, oh, I'll show you in a second here. You can see that the NRV head that's designed to work with a pip cup has a smaller opening and a almost like a little nozzle to fit in the pip cup. The other one that's designed to work with a solid pip, the one up on the top there, has a bigger hole and more blunt opening or blunt end to it. You can see how the pip cup will actually fit down around that barrel of our NRV head there. Whereas this one, the later development NRV, doesn't really fit quite as well. Now there's a way around that and that's just to make a thicker pip and I'll show you how that works. To replace the pip in a pip cup, simply take your dental tool and carefully stab the rubber pip that's in there and then just pull it out. You can see this one's really thin. And I'm going to replace it with a thicker pip as so. Now the pip should be a snug fit in the pip cup, so when you insert it in there, you may actually need to work it in with one of your dental tools. And that's one of the real advantages of having some dental tools around. So we work that in so it's sitting in there, but you can see it's sitting up above the surrounding edge of the pip cup. This means it'll work with the original style NRV head, which has the narrow barrel, and also work with the later style of NRV head, which has the fat, wider barrel. So I'm assembling that back together, and then I'll assemble the uh, more recent type of NRV back together. I've replaced the solid pip with a new solid pip, and down in the description, there's some links to where you can find the new one-piece solid pips, which are, are reportedly Viton, and you can replace that sort of NRV pip also with your stove. Now, very importantly, both of these NRVs do not have head gaskets currently. Here's an example of an original style lead gasket. Here's one that's made out of HDPE, that's high density polyethylene. And here's one I like to make out of low density polyethylene. The low density at polyethylene I make from old food container lids and I find because it's a little softer 
than the HDPE. It works better. Also, I make the hole in the center much tighter, so it has a much tighter fit around the head of the NRV. I'll show you how to do that. For punching NRVs, I use concentric hollow punches, but they're a real expensive item to buy if you're only going to have a few stoves. So what you can do is just take a hole punch, like for paper, like your kids probably have for their schoolwork. The lids I used are marked number two recycling plastic, and they're soft and kind of waxy kind of plastic. So punch yourself a hole with the hole punch. It'll give you a six millimeter or quarter inch diameter hole and then take a pair of scissors and cut it out and then trim it to about the size you need. Will it be as perfect as using a concentric hollow punch? No, but if you just work at it a little bit you'll get pretty close. Then work the NRV head gasket over the barrel and up into the threads of the NRV head. Once you get started a little bit you can even use the NRV tool to help screw it on there, basically screwing the gasket on. When you have enough threads showing, they'll go ahead and seat when you install them in the stove. Now, I unfortunately lost that little segment of that particular stove having its NRV go back in, so instead I'm showing you a different stove of installing an NRV. So just pop it in the pump tube, shake it into place so it seats down in through the hole, and then Take your NRV wrench, and you can notice I'm just using a two-finger grip. I am not having to strain to get that nice soft gasket to seat underneath the NRV head. And just go ahead and do a few turns. You can kind of feel when it gets about right. And that's the advantage of using low-density polyethylene. I've replaced the fuel cap gasket, renovated the NRV, and reinstalled it in the stove, and installed the pump with its renovated pump cup. I have a very popular video on how to start up the stove so it looks like this. In the upper right hand corner of the screen you'll see a link to that video. If your stove doesn't burn this well when you start it up it may need to be pricked. Let's talk about that. When you start up your stove if you're seeing yellow flames or a lot of bad quality flames it may be because the jet is clogged and if it's an old stove that's not too surprising. What you'll need is a jet pricker like this one and you can find links at the description below this video on where you can find them. It's a small wire and it fits inside the hole of the jet. Just insert the pricker or cleaning needle if you rather into the opening on the jet, wiggle it around a little bit and that will clean your jet. You may find you have to burn through a half a tank, maybe a full tank, before your stove will burn this well. Don't be impatient. You'll get there. I hope this has been a useful video for you. Thanks for watching. Please link, like, and subscribe.